Hello, this is Echo Chernick. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel at the end of it. Welcome back to Illustrator and we are going to uh, work on some of your artwork today. While we're working on it, we'll come across different tools that I'll be teaching you. And the best way to learn something sometimes is just to, to, to use it. I've, I've taught you everything that you need to know to get started on it and I'm just going to expand on that today. So we're going to go to File New, and then we're going to go to File Place, and we go to, uh, to, to the file, grab it, and hit Place. This is going to place your image here, and you can see it's got the big bounding box. This is a raster image. Um, it's not a vector image, obviously, because we haven't made it vector yet. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the actual size of it, and I'm going to shrink it down to be a good size on our artboard. Now it is going to be a little bit pixelated probably, depending on how big, how large you scanned it. And it is a preview, so it's going to be a little bit um, pixelated. So once you get that in a good place, in a good size, whatever size works for you, we're going to go to look for our layers. That layers palette was open, so give me a layers palette window. There it is. Oh, it's hidden under your face. There we go. Do you remember this from uh, from last time? We have the first layer is the art. I'm going to double click on the name and name it uh, our lock artwork, which is a good habit to get into. And then I'm going to lock that layer so that we can't accidentally grab it or do anything to it. Then we're going to make a new layer above it. Okay. Now I'm not going to follow your line drawing exactly because I um, I want to cover a couple different tools and ways to do things. And we, if you wanted to trace all of these lines exactly as they are, you could absolutely do that. But uh, our artwork is going to look a little bit different just because we're going to be using this as reference um, and then showing you how to modify things. So you can go back to tracing everything exactly as is as it is later if you want. Okay. So I'm going to start with this lock here with this. Uh, sorry, with the keyhole. Okay. Because we're going to be able to take two shapes and combine them to make a keyhole. So I'm going to make a circle first. You should be able to follow on, along with me onto the, on this. And then I'm going to make, oh, I'm going to make a rectangle. I'm going to make a rectangle with slightly rounded edges. Those are too much rounded edges. So I am going to, what I do is I have my rectangle tool with the rounded edges. And if I click here, it's going to pop up. Remember this little, uh, this little menu that allows us to put in the exact size. It'll also let us control the corner radius. So if I wanted to have smaller corners or larger corners, I could just adjust these numbers here to make smaller, smaller corner radiuses or larger radi you know, radiuses. I'm just trying to find one that I, that I want to make 0 0.005. Let's see. Well, it looks about right. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just, you know, whatever, you, whatever feels good for you. Okay, let me know if I'm going too fast. And I'm kind of doing the subversive thing here. So I'm, I'm working on it the way I would work on it and then letting you ask questions. Okay, can you um, go over the... Uh... Rounded rectangle tool again? Yeah, so it's the corner radius. So go to the rounded rectangle tool mm -hmm. and rather than drawing, if you draw like that, it's just gonna come up with whatever the default radius for the corners are. But if you wanna adjust that, you just click no, just click, and it's going to pop up that menu that lets you put in the exact size. So you could just type in the exact size you wanted if you wanted it. Uh, but it also lets you adjust the corner radius. So um, you could type in, I put in 0 0.055. I just, I tend to be very freeform with this sort of thing. So uh, um, I'm just doing a size that looks good because I can always adjust the corners later to get it to get it to look a little different. So uh, in this case, 0 0.055 seemed to work with the size that I'm working on. You can see I, I'm looking, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the corner radius here and I'm looking at the corner here and I'm trying to get something that's close to it. Mostly while I'm doing this, I'm going to be just going through a couple different methods so I can just run you through a couple different, learn how to use the different tools. Let me know when you're done. I'm done. Okay. So for the bottom half of this, I'm, I'm just running you through a couple different ways that we can do things so that later in the future when you're working on your own artwork, you can pick out which way works best for you. Okay. okay, so to make this guy, did you get him yet? Click, mm -hmm. you, you click and adjust the corner radius till it's uh, something you like that's somewhat similar. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go to, remember the uh, the direct selection tool? Yes, ma'am. A, 
I'm going to manually do this. I'm going to, I'm going to drag my cursor across the corner and you see it's turned my two points dark, but the, the other points are all white. That means just these two are the ones that are selected. And I'm just going to use the little arrows on my keyboard and move them over a little bit. I just moved them five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. Something like that. So by selecting just, you know, by dragging across, you could just select those points and then you're only moving those individual points, which lets you just manually move things around and see how these are red and then these are white. That means that these are the ones that are selected manually. But I need to keep them in the same line. I'm just using the little keyboard command, the arrows to move them around to get them roughly where I want them. Then you're gonna grab both these images, hit a line and align to center so that they're on the same line. Okay. We'll move them up and there we, we kind of roughly have two shapes that are about the same. Now we can adjust this to be, uh, to be, to look as similar as you want to your piece. Now I could just trace yours and get it to look exactly like yours, but I'm going to go a little more precise just to show you more tools. So remember we have, then we have two shapes that I've combined to make one keyhole. I am going to use Pathfinder to make that into one shape. So go ahead. Now there's a couple ways to do this. There are, it's also under transform. You can do it as well, but this is the way I, I like to do it. Just drag your direct select tool across the two points here. And then you can use your, uh, your key, your, uh, your arrows on your keyboard to just move them. Oh, okay. That's it. I just moved them, uh, I think five in, whatever looks good on your screen. Yours does not have to look exactly like mine does because I'm not copying your image exactly. And you may choose later to go back and copy your image exactly. That's up to you. Okay. I'm going to be sort of um, idealizing your image a little, mostly just to show you a couple different ways of doing it. Yeah, stuff. no, for sure. Good with that. Got it aligned. All right, so it's aligned now. Whoops. So um, now I'm going to move this up and get it to eh, where it looks good. Like I said, I'm not doing very, uh, not, I'm not being very precise on this. I'm just sort of freeforming it. I do, this is how I do most of my drawings is freeforming it. So that looks good to me. And then I'm going to grab them both. And then I'm going to, am I going to uh, unite them into one shape? Shape is united. All right. Now I am sort of very particular with my lines. I like to have, I don't want it to look too computer generated or too, you know, geometric. So I like to play with my lines a little bit here. So I am gonna zoom in and I want these corners to be a little more curved. There's a couple of different ways that I can do that. Um, but because I wanna show you how to use the, um, how to use a few more of the, uh, the pen tool uh, options, we're gonna do it this way. When you take your direct select, select tool and click on it, you can see that you have the one handle that goes up to the curve and then the handle disappears as it goes straight here. So if I were to move this one handle, only that one side would move. And just to recap, not that I want you doing this, but just to recap, if you use the anchor point tool and you drag through, you'd end up with both handles back. Remember that? So say mm -hmm. you wanted to bring that, say you wanted to bring it in, you had to have it dip in like this. That's what you would do. You would go in and you could, you could take your anchor point tool and you could go and now you have something that looks like this instead. So you've now turned it into a nice smooth curve. That's one way to do it. But I don't want to lose the straight line, so I'm going to go over to the uh, pen tool and I'm going to click on the add anchor point tool. I do a lot of my corners this way just because, I don't know, I just like to. Okay. And I'm going to add an anchor point up here and below it. So now I end up with three anchor points. So that's given me three. Okay. Now, if I move that center one, you see it's gonna, whoops, it's gonna limit, stop grabbing the wrong thing. See if I move that center one, it's going to um, just control those two lines on either side of it. Did you so merge I, the, sorry, did you merge the rectangle in the circle? Yes, I did. Uh, that's the step I missed. That's okay, sorry. go back and merge, merge the rectangle in the circle. Let's do that again. Here they are with the two. Go to Pathfinder, Unite so that they now become one shape, permanently married. Voila. <laughs> Just takes practice. 
All right, and now I'm going to go create my. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. You're going to go over to the pen tool, and if you click on the little um, arrow in the corner, if you should see pen tool, then you should see add and delete anchor point. We're going to add an anchor point up here. Bonk, the one below. Bonk. And that will give me ultimate control of this little guy in the center. Oops, sorry. Okay. Did you get an anchor point tool in there? An anchor yeah. point? You have an extra look sort of like this. Yep. All right. So now that gives you uh, that gives you control, and I, where you place them is up to you, um, depending on what you're doing. But now you have a little more control of this corner. Like here, if I move this this around, I'm moving literally the whole side. Here, I now have this control here, so I can decide I want to keep it. I want it to go in straight and then up, or I want it to do um, many many things. If you want to, if you want to change it from um, where it goes straight to curved. Remember, you have to use your anchor point tool and drag that handle all the way through. So you end up down with a curvy guy so that you can control your, your curve. I'm showing you like, so I show you so you can choose and decide how you want that the connector to go. If you want it to be smooth, if you want it to be straight. See, I'm gonna, see, I'm gonna bring it in really close and I am just going to make this little guy rounded out here. See that gives me a lot of control how I want to control how I want to handle that corner. Rather than you're not you're no longer handling that entire corner. You're just you're just using that that anchor point in the center here to uh, to be able to control this. Now, like I said, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do this with adding and minusing shapes and other ways as well. I'm just showing you one way. Now you see I have this smooth corner instead of having this sharper corner. Looks it makes it look more pen hand drawn. Part of the reason I like to do this by hand rather than mathematically is that I um, I like it to look imperfect. See, now I'm going to go and adjust it. I personally like it to be slightly different than this side, which would drive drives my husband nuts because he's very math oriented and he wants everything to be perfectly symmetrical. And me, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it's supposed to be hand drawn. I want I want all my little corners to be. You know, I think the brain can feel when it looks at a piece if it's mathematically perfect or if it's not. See, it looks a little more hand drawn, even though the the the, um, the corners are very minutely different. I think the brain knows. But I will take a second here and show you how to make it perfectly mirrored, if you'd like. Let me know when you're done with that, and I'll show you. You don't have to do this. I just want to show it to you how to do it. I can't, um, yeah, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not there, but That's show okay. me what you're going to show me. And no, then no, 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 let's get you here first. Okay. So do you, did you have your, did you add your little point on in the center? Or are you able to control it and get it to be? I I did add the, you know, three anchor points. I'm not liking. Okay. Make sure in the center, make sure you, t you can use your anchor point tool. If you drag it through, remember, it's going to give you the handles that go nice and clean. If you don't, you're going to end up with the uh the one broke one where one is smooth and one is straight how we go from remember how we go from smooth to mm -hmm. to straight so if you want it to be a nice smooth curve you're going to want to add that on so that you have a nice okay. smooth curve and you can adjust it the way you want it and you can also take these guys and move them down if you accidentally made it too close and you want a little bit of a longer curve there or if you want it to go a little wider you can move all of these guys individually And like I said, you can take that and do all kinds of funky things with it later if you want it to be more particular. Let me know when you're there. I'm there-ish. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm specifically making this a little funky right now because I want to show you uh, 
I like it. So say I had the shape and I, I like to, I like it to look sort of free form, but I wanted to say, I wanted to mirror this exactly. What I would do now is I would copy this and paste it, or I'm just going to click on it, hold down alt and shift. And then remember it's going to copy it uh, below when I drag it down. Mm -hmm. So I click alt shift drags it down. So now I have an identical one. Okay. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show it to you. You can go over it later if you want. I'm going to now take a rectangle tool, put it at the midpoint there, select both shapes, and then minus that rectangle. So now I literally have half a shape. I'm going to do object, transform, reflect, and then preview so I can take a look at it. Hit copy, and I'm going to end up with two identical mirrors of each other. Mm. Oops, sorry. And then I'm going to move them into each other. Wow, look at that keyhole. And that keyhole is perfect. Get them all lined up great. Grab them both and then go ahead and make them back mm -hmm. into one shape again. Nice. So yeah, so you end up with a with a mirrored copy of it. <laughs> so that's my that's my mirrored copy. So <laughs> now since I've totally messed this one up, I'm gonna do exactly what I just did, but do it in reverse. Object, transform, reflect, copy, drag it over and make it one shape again. So that's how you get something identical. And you can always go in after you did that and, and you can adjust all the little points to make it not quite perfect. If you wanted a little bit more of a hand-drawn look, you can go in and just make it look, you know, a little bit less perfect and stuff like that. So, okay. Okay. I'm gonna delete that guy because we don't need that guy. So we have our keyhole. Now, what do you have around here? You have the lock, the shape of the lock, and then it looks like you have like a kind of a border around it that's going to turn into these other filigrees. I'm not sure what, uh, how yours would look versus mine, but I'm going to do it the way I do it, and then you can do it differently, okay, if you want. So this is um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit, copy this lock here, edit paste and back. So now there's two shapes right on top of each other, you know, right on top like this. I'm going to give the bottom one a stroke of white. And then make the stroke on the outside a little bit larger. Now you can, you can use the shape that you have, that top shape that you have now and make a stroke on the outside. Um, I'm, the way I'm doing it, uh, is to put a separate shape below because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this outline into a shape. So I want it separate from my top shape. So if I were just to take my uh, my top keyhole and put a stroke on it, and then I were to expand it into a shape, um, then you'd have, I, I want it to be two different shapes. So ultimately the stroke on the outside is going to be a separate shape. So right now it's, here's the keyhole and here's the stroke, but they're two, 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 two separate shapes. And I'm not trying to copy your lock exactly. I'm just trying to show you um, right. different ways to do things. Let me know when you have a stroke on the outside. Make sure you click on the stroke tool, align stroke to outside. The uh, ability to align it to the outside and the inside is um, awesome. When I first started using Illustrator, that didn't exist. and You actually had to take the first um, object and minus it from the second object in order to create the stroke on the outside. So this makes it a lot easier. Okay, I've got the stroke on the outside. All right. So now what we're going to do is we want to turn that stroke into a shape. Okay, because right now you can't, you see there's no points on the outside. So I can't manipulate that shape. I want to make this curl down here into a different shape and I want to add it to this white shape. But I can't because this white shape isn't actually a shape. It's just a stroke. So I'm going to go to object, expand appearance. And when I go to, when I hit object, expand appearance, object, expand appearance, it's now you've noticed it changes from a stroke to a shape. That means you're not going to be able to mm. use any of the stroke options on it anymore. And in fact, if you notice when I did that, I, if you look here, it's, I, I reverted. So it's back to a stroke. There's no line on the outside here showing me a stroke. And then this is empty fill. When I do object, expand appearance, it switches. So now this has a fill color, but no stroke color. So I'm not getting the option for expand appearance. Like it's there, but it's grayed out. Do you have expand? Mm -hmm. 
uh, try expand. Okay. Um, Object. Is it allowing you to expand or expand appearance? I, it'll allow me to expand. My options that I can cho choose are fill or stroke or both. Are you selected just on the just on the stroke, right? Okay. Are you selected? It sounds like you're selected on both of them. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Make sure you make sure that when you click on it, it shows here that the, the stroke is selected. See if I do both. Say for instance, say so now I, I I've accidentally selected both the shape and the stroke, and mm -hmm. it's showing question mark question mark question mark. That's because um, there's two objects that are selected that both have different fills and strokes. So if you're having problems selecting the other one, click on the center of the of the um, of the keyhole and do um, object lock selection, and that will lock this keyhole and so that you just have the shape. That makes it a little easier. Okay. It's also control two, I think. Um, object lock. Yeah, oh, uh, uh, control two locks it. I do it. I just do it on my keyboard automatically, so that um, you've locked that front shape. So now you only you're only going to be grabbing the stroke, and then you should see just what the stroke down here, and then you should see object expand appearance. Would you mind switching to, or would you yeah, mind sure. letting me share screen? Then you can walk me through it on mine. No problem. I'm sorry. No, hey, no problem. Mm -hmm. All right, let me expand this. Okay, it looks like, for, hold on, hold on. Okay, so it looks like you have one object, I think. Here, take the dirt, take the uh, the black arrow and move it around. Let me see, and just take, click the black arrow, click off over here, click here. Just click off to the side. Okay. All right, now click, now click on the white. Now, uh, looking down here at the corner, I can see that you have a fill color of black and a stroke color of white. That means that you are, um, you have both combined in one in one uh, object. So I want you to turn off the fill color so that you go over here to the fill color, which is black, and hit the the, um, the button that says none. Okay, you see you lost your keyhole, the black one that was behind it. Mm -hmm. That's because you um, didn't it didn't copy and paste successfully. So let's uh, so let's turn this back into our keyhole. So um, go ahead and uh, get rid of the stroke color on it. Okay, hit object, copy, or sorry, edit, sorry, edit. My bad, edit, copy. You get so used to doing it without even looking at what it says. Uh, edit, paste in front. I missed a step. Two, yes. So now put the, put the stroke on that top one only. So you can go ahead and you can, uh, yeah, just flip them or, Whatever way is easiest for you. <laughs> you can, yeah, you got it. You're good. Now get rid of the fill color. You can still see the black because you can still see the other one. Now you notice that your line goes all the way through the middle of the stroke. Mm -hmm. In my line, it went on the outside. Do you know why? Um, you had a stroke selection. Yeah, you should be able to select outside only. What line stroke to outside? Mm -hmm. Try there. There you are. Okay. So now what it's doing is it's in, you. You have your center line, and rather than doing it right in the center like it was before, you're now aligning the stroke selection to the outside of the line. Okay. You could also do it to the inside of the select line if you wanted to as well. There's these are your options there. You don't really have to work about corner or cap because we have. Um, you don't have to worry about that in this case. Okay. Now try object expand. Uh, now it's going to expand appearance. Yep. Honestly, I'm not really sure what the difference is between expand and expanding appearances. To, to be completely truthful, I'm sure there's a difference, but um, I I never bothered to look it up. But it uh, it works. It, yeah, so it expands it and it turns it now into a shape. Now let me go back to my viewing here. Back to my screen. Share screen. Yes. Yes. Share. So now the difference is that we now have to, we have the keyhole we originally had and we have this which is now a shape. That means that this shape would be completely eligible to have another stroke on it. So if we wanted to, we can click over here to stroke, double click on it and put a stroke around the outside 
And the difference is it's gonna go around both sides. So if you wanted to, to stroke this, it would be around, it would be around the, uh, it, it would be around the entire shape. Right now it's aligned in the center. And you can go to object arrange and bring it to the front if you wanted to make sure that it didn't uh, get hidden. Cause if, if it's half uh, before it was hidden like this, that's because it's behind the black shape. The object arranged right in front, you now can see that there's the full line around it. Okay. We don't need a stroke right now. I'm just I'm just showing you that this okay. is this is the way you can you can it is now an object that's completely eligible to have its own stroke. Cool. I put a stroke on it just so I could see the object a little bit better. <clears throat> so this lock, how much do we want to conform? Do we want to conform to the way the drawing is, or do we want to make it like a perfectly symmetrical lock, or how do you want this thing to look? Um, oh, wait, uh, well, I've got, I've got the hand-drawn version, so let's, let's digitize it and make it perfect and. Okay, because if you were going to hand-draw it, I'll just show you both methods. Um, it's going to have a completely different look. Obviously, if you're going to do it as objects and, um, if you're going to do it as objects, I think it's going to look much more perfectly rendered. If you're going to do the hand-drawn version, we're going to do it a little bit differently, but it's going to look more hand-drawn. Uh, it depends on what you're trying to do with it. So, but since we're learning, let's, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and we're going to try to make this shape. Okay. okay. So, um, to trace it, the best thing to do would be for us to tilt the background. So let's go over to our layers. So it's not going to look exactly like you're drawing. It's going to look, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna change it a little bit up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna click on our we're gonna unlock our backward artwork, and okay. we're going to uh, it's tilted upright, so it's pretty much straight up and down. I'm looking at the left side because I think it's a little bit cleaner than the right side, so I'm gonna do the left side. And again, it's not gonna look exactly like your artwork, but that's okay. This is a learning exercise. lock that bottom artwork again. We're just tilting it to... Just tilt it so that it looks visually up and down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this, this left half here and then I'm going to mirror it like I showed you with the lock. It's going to be much more technically perfect and not look as interesting as you're drawing, but um, okay. this is all about learning different ways to do things. Because as you're working on your projects in the future, you you want different outcomes and different effects. And so you want, you want to do it this way or that way or this way, depending on what you're trying to achieve. So are you there? Are you up and down? I am. All right. We're going to pick on the ellipse tool here. And we're going to make us a nice... Is this an extra, is this a third layer? Uh, yeah, I guess. It could it be the third like layer. Yeah, it could be the third layer. It could be on the same layer. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. So you're going to make an ellipse with, um, with a stroke. Just line it up as, as if you want it to be perfectly circular, you can make it perfectly circular. Line it up to be where, where you want it. Not going for accuracy, I'm going for to make it more symmetrical in this in this version of it. And then we're gonna adjust the stroke weight to be something that looks good and handily. I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it to be about the same weight as, as the solid object handle. Because I'm gonna be making like a very clean vector version of this thing. So I end up with something that looks about the right, about the right weight. Then I'm going to hit object expand. So I end up with basically a handle like that. Now, the only part I'm really worried about and looking at is this part here. 
because this is the part I know that I'm going to use and I'm going to reflect. I'm not really worried about this part at all because I'm going to make this symmetrical. So I'm, I'm only looking at like this left side to get it the way I want it. Did you, did you uh, expand it into an object yet? Not yet. Well, okay. So I've, did you, um, okay. Backtrack. I was just trying to get my ellipse right because I'm slow and I'm new. No, at hey, that's fine. So I got my ellipse. You got right. your ellipse the way you wanted it. Um, and if you wanted it to be a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit wider or whatever at the bottom, you can use this point to grab one of your points and to drag these handles. But you're only really concerned about like this upper corner because okay. we're going to reflect it and we're going to uh, to get rid of the rest of this. So if you so want is to- our, So our can, stroke, is, I just need to make my stroke wide enough to fill the handle. Make your stroke wide enough to fill the handle. And then if you wanted to adjust your, uh, your handles to, you know, to be a little bit unique, to not be completely the same as what was, uh, um, what just appeared, if you wanted to, you know, adjust them, you could do that at this point. Now this is one way to make this handle. There's several ways to make this handle. This is just one way. And later on when you're making your, all your individual other objects, you have to figure out which way works for you and which way, you know, you want to use. And it might take, you might do it one way and be like, oh, I don't really like the way that came out and just redo it a different way. You might be like, I think I need to trace that instead, you know. So this is just showing you how to use all the, how to use all the different tools that you've already learned. And we're going to expand that when you get a chance. Okay, so I've got my stroke. I need to transform it into... Expand it. Expand it. So you end up with a shape. Oh, how do I... Mm -hmm. Okay, so it did, it did the same thing where it um, is cop like it's selecting both the stroke and the fill. So I get what rid I of the fill, so you just have a stroke. Right, I got rid of the fill, so I just have this stroke. Like the um, mine, mine looks like yours, but when I go to ex edit or object expand, okay, you're in. Uh, I can tell right now you're in um, isolation mode. You double clicked on it, so it's only showing that, which is fine. Oh, there you go. There you go. Back. Okay, so click on click on your uh, on your. Oh, see, yeah, you have a shape. You're good. Okay. You're but, good. Yeah, all right. you, you did it right. You did it right. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You can tell because the green is around the outside and not, uh, uh, it's on the outside and the inside. So it's a okay. shape, it's shape, not just a line. Okay. Okay. I'll give my screen back. All right. Take it back. <laughs> no, you're good. You are on track. So I'm going to go to object, expand, get that back to a shape. So now we're on a shape. Uh, what I'm going to do now is that I know I'm making this part of the, can the handle and I know I'm going to put stuff up there is I'm just going to randomly chop off the bottom half here. Actually, you can just do it with a rectangle. You don't need to do it with a shape. We're going to, we're going to just draw a, a rectangle on the bottom. Okay. And you're going to select both. And you're going to chop the bottom off. I selected both. And it deleted both of them. Okay, try it again. Undo. Undid. Select both and then go to Pathfinder minus front. Oh, okay. I can't see all of my. Um, it's okay. All of my if um, always, uh, I, I know if you're trying to do that and it's not working correctly, another thing to double check is that the object in the front, which should be the rectangle, is indeed in the front and didn't end up in the back somehow, because then it'll select the front from the back. So if it's selecting the wrong thing and you're like, but I'm doing minus front, but it keeps selecting the circle from the rectangle, then make sure they're in the right order because you're minusing the okay. object that's in the front. So I go to Pathfinder and then and I'm uniting? To minus front. And oh, it's, minus it's going to do is it's going to take that rectangle and there, it's basically it's going to use it to chop oh, okay. it off. Chop. Cool. Now there are other ways to do this, but this is the way I find the easiest way. To chop, do chop. Chop, chop. Okay. Um, let us do, let's turn this into a stroke now. I'm going to try to go with a brighter color so you can see it a little bit clearer. 
we're going to make this a look a little more hand-drawn for fun. We have our stroke. Figure out how thick you want that outside line. Okay. You want it to be thin, you want it to be thick, somewhere in the median range of where you want it to be. Right now, it's got one point on it, which is, to me, nice. I'm not trying to match your lines. I, I'm making my own thing right now. Later, you might want to match your lines, and that's fine. But I'm making it pretty, uh, pretty correct. When you find a uh, when you find a stroke that you like, we're going to expand that stroke so that this stroke ends up being a shape. Okay. All right. Now you'll figure out. How, you know, once you keep using these tools enough, you'll figure out what works best for what and what you're comfortable with, and you'll find your own way of working. There's three or four ways of doing everything in Illustrator, and some people use a certain skill set of a certain set of tools, and then um, find that that's what works good for them. And other people use, you know, others. I use ones my husband doesn't use, but my husband uses ones that I don't use. It's just you know, it's, it's a comfort thing. Okay. Okay. So do you have now? Do you have a stroke? I do. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna adjust this line weight, being artists, we're gonna adjust this line weight to have the line weight we want it to have. Because if you look now, it's beautifully symmetrical. Now there is ways to adjust your line weight in Illustrator using like stroke and brushes and stuff. But we're gonna do this the manual old fashioned way. We're gonna grab these individual points and we're gonna decide how exactly we want this thing to look. Like I want it to be a little thicker down the base here. So I'm gonna grab these, move them down like this. And I've decided that I want there's to be, you're ignoring the stuff that's at the bottom because that's going to be all hidden. But I've decided I want there's to be a shadow here. Now, even though we're in red, red is just to help me work. I am going to take my pen tool and I'm going to draw myself a kind of free form shadow like this, a shape. And then I'm going to add those two together with Pathfinder. So now I'm going to delete this. So now I've ended up with this shadow that once I clip off the bottom is going to is going to be part of the line weight. You see that? See what I did there? Mm -hmm. That's going to be actually part of my drawing later. I've, I've now taken this and added this shape onto it. So this is like this is like one big pen line, and I can go ahead and I can adjust these guys. Now you'll see here when I did that, I ended up with an extra point this little guy float here. I can't hit delete because if I hit delete, clonk, I'm gonna end up actually missing that part of the line, which is sometimes what you wanna do, but not in this case. I want that, that point to go away. So I'm gonna go over here to the same place that we did add anchor point and I'm gonna hit delete anchor point and boop, he's gone. And the same thing up here, I decided that I want this to have a little bit of a thinner line. I want this to be a little bit thinner, but I don't want to screw up my general curve of it. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add an anchor point somewhere in the middle here, and that'll give me a little bit more control. So now I can go and I can make this thinner here while still maintaining the width. And if I decide that's not what I want to do, then I can always go to delete. You want to try to always work with the minimal amount of anchor points um, that you that achieve what you're looking to achieve. But you are free to add and delete some to try to get a the minute control that you want. See, adding one here gives me a little bit more control, so this way I can now go thinner in the middle and then wider again. How do you so, use anchor points to make a line thinner or thicker? Uh, the, uh, how do you use, uh, because you're, when, you, when you move an anchor point, you're controlling that whole shape, side of that shape. So see how that shape is a line? So but by moving the shape, you're making the shape thinner. Whoops, sorry. You're making the shape um, turn thinner versus wider. So oh, you know what? You use the anchor points to get more control. I still had it on, uh, it was still a stroke. So um, it wasn't. Okay, that's fine. Then hit expand and make it into a shape. Because even though it's a line, like this is an outline, we know it's an outline, it's still a shape. See that there? It's an outline, but it's a shape. So it's a, lot, it's a line, but it's not a line. Okay. And this down here is going to go away, this bleed part. This is going to be added to and deleted as I add the rest of it. I'm just leaving it down there for now. So once you have your, you know, you can go ahead and you can, you can have a lot of control. So maybe I will go a little bit closer to what you had. I'm going to bring this in like this. 
Now you can control these lines manually to make it look more like a drawing. If you notice up here, I ended up with an extra, an extra anchor point. So I'm going to minus that anchor point, Ta -da! which kind of messed that up a little bit. So notice it, uh, it goes from curvy to straight. So I'm going to go over to the anchor point tool and drag that through. Now that problem there is because this is too long. A lot of this just comes with practice of moving stuff around. You'll notice every once in a while, even I grab the shape by accident and move it instead of grabbing the anchor point. If that happens, just, just undo and then click off and then try to grab the anchor point again. See, I have a couple anchor points up here. Same thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of one of those because I wanna have more control over it. You control everything with your anchor point, with your handles on the sides or with the uh, anchor points in the middle here. If it doesn't make the smooth curve you want, you go in and use the anchor point tool to make it back into a nice strong curve. See, now it's a strong curve, but it's making it look weird because this, this handle's too long. So you just manipulate them until you get exactly where you want to be. And you need to know when sometimes you need to add more anchor points, and sometimes you need to take some away. And a lot of that comes with just practice. See, if I were to try to, if I were to try to trace your line here or get it pretty close to your line, I'm going to need to add more anchor points because I can't get this to curve out like that. So in order to do that, I'm going to add an anchor point about here. I'm going to drag it out to here. Now it's going to start to, it's going to start to look a little bit more inconsistent in it because uh, I'm now, um, I'm uh, adding more anchor points and I'm and making it look a little bumpy, but I'm making it look bumpy on purpose. That's my choice. Right. It, it's like following the flow of the ink from the ink pen. Right. And it's my choice to do that. So it's okay for it to look inconsistent and bumpy like that. See, now I've just made this kind of crazy bumpy thing. And if I wanted to add even a little bit of a pen drip in here, maybe I could go mm -hmm. in and I could add another little shape like this. See, now I just put another shape on it like that uh. and add those together. And now I've just made a completely little pen drippy sort of thing manually. I do a lot of that. See, now it looks like you, your, your pen slipped a little bit. So you're giving yourself, you know, a little bit more of a pen drawn look, but you have total control on how that pen drawn look looks. I'm gonna add my shadow on this side. I'm gonna come up, oh, I kinda like how you have this, it goes up like this, it looks like the metal's chipped, so I'm gonna kinda follow that. I'm gonna go back down here, cause this is gonna be, it's gonna be cut off. So I went up and I followed, I followed that up like that. Mm, okay, will you show me again how to do that shadow? How mm -hmm. to get the, the curve to go that way? Uh, you mean the shadow down here? Yep. Uh, it, all it is is just a shape that I added on. Uh, okay. So basically, all I did was, let me undo. All it is is here's my shape, my red mm -hmm. shape, and I'm gonna draw another shape with the pen tool, freeform draw it over the top. Okay. And I'm just gonna make it look however I want it to look. And now before you combine the two shapes, because these are actually two shapes, I'll show you by making a different color. These are two shapes. Uh, before I combine them, I can go ahead and I can adjust these with my, um, with my anchor points if I wanted to, get it just perfect. And then you can combine it into one shape. I want it to be red, not blue. There we go. Now it's one shape and you can go ahead and you can adjust them manually and you have total control over your line weight. So you think of it both as a line and a shape, it's a little weird. So all we're gonna be doing is basically Make, taking this line or the shape, and then we're going to add another shape over it that we know we're going to want to be a solid color. We're going to we're going to want to take this line and turn it around. Now, could I add anchor points here, 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 and like drag it all the way around and minus anchor points? I, I could do that, but that that would take way too much time. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another shape. I'm going to start at the top, and I'm going to get I'm looking at how I want the top of this this shape to look. I'm going to want it to I'm going to want it to end off there. Then I'm going to just go down, 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 and sort of fill in this space. 
so that it um, it's going to become one big object like that. Okay. Oh, okay. So don't think of this as one line. Think of it as you're adding another shape to it. If it's easier, you can add the bottom part first, and then you can come in and do the top like this. I find it's a little harder to see that way, but it might be more intuitive. So what you're doing is you're making you're making this line here, and then you're just um, adding the shape together. We're going to be chopping this bottom part off. I'm just not worried about it yet. See, I'm going to be chopping it off like that later when we add this part onto it. When you think of all this red, it's going to be your ink. This is our, this is our ink line. When I turn this black, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to look like our pen and ink. OK? I just don't do it black because it's hard to see on the, uh, on the background image. Now, if you, if you wanted to, just, just so you know, this, this is possible. I don't use this a lot just because I don't particularly like it. But if you go to the, uh, the artwork layer and you double click where it says artwork, it'll give you some options, including changing the name of the layer. But another thing it lets you do is you can dim the images, which drops them back. And then you could trace over them. Some people like doing that. Personally, I don't because I can't always see my images. So I tend to trace over them in a different color and then convert it to, to there. But you may like to work this way. So you double click on your artwork layer and it lets you dim the images to however percentage you want it to dim it to. I should probably do that just so you can see it. There, I'll work like that for now. I don't know why I don't work like that. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a personal work thing. But that lets you dim your background image. I do like that. <laughs> I don't know why I don't, I don't know. It's just, I do and I don't, it's, it's fine. I just forget to do it and I just don't bother. So I tend to work in another color instead. It's, I think it's just a habit. How are you doing with that? Good? Yeah. I will probably be fiddling around with this quite a bit after we get, get done with our video. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if you, there's, now when it comes to this cross hatching, there's a couple of different ways that we could do this. We could do this as actual cross hatching. We can do it as shading. Um, for today, I'm not going to get into shading. Instead, I'm going to just show you how to do it with cross hatching, okay? Okay. We're going to go over to the paintbrush tool, under the paintbrush tool there. And that's going to give us a stroke that we can just draw. It's like using the pen tool, but when you draw it, it makes all those curves for you. Oh my gosh, Echo, this is so much easier. Why didn't you teach me to do this before? Because <laughs> you have gosh. to earn your way here. Huh? Well, I mean, I know why you, I know why you taught me the harder way. Well, it's not really the harder way. It's, it's, it's it a different way. It's a different way that doesn't give you as much control in some ways. So, okay. all right, so if you, if you were to draw with this, <coughs> you click on it, it would allow you to adjust your stroke the same way that you um, adjust your stroke before. So now that's going to give you basically the same as the, as the pen tool, but you can draw with it. So you can go ahead and you can do some of your uh, lines like that. Now all of these are going to follow the same rules. They're going to be individual lines. We can convert them to shapes. We can convert this to one big shape later on. Uh, then it'll, it'll allow us to, to adjust the colors. Like if we wanted to convert it to one shape, throw a gradient on it later. We could do that. We're, we're going to learn that later. Right now we're just going to play with the brush tool. Now okay. why isn't this guy ideal all the time? Now look, when I make a circle like this, it's going to give me some cool line weight at the edge, which is desirable sometimes. It is not desirable at other times. It completely depends what you're doing. Sometimes you're not going to want, you know, and you're not going to want control. It, it depends what you're doing. We will also get into um, the, more of the brushes and controls of them as well. If you look at the top, you can play with this if you want. Um, if you look at the top where it says uniform, I'm drawing on uniform right now. You can adjust how you're drawing. It, it'll give you different, uh, different effects here. Where did it go? I don't use this a lot. I tend to be much more controlling on it.
what's pretty cool though sometimes you could do a um you could do a brush with some effects to it so play with these later on i i tend to not rely on them for i i much i like a lot of control when i'm drawing I, to me, these don't have as much control as I want. I like to have a lot of control. I, I like my line widths to be exactly where I want them to be. So if you're going to draw with the brush, it doesn't always give you as much control. But again, when you draw your stroke, you can go to Object, Expand Appearance, and now you have control to go ahead and adjust it any way you want. If it wasn't quite perfect, you can make it quite perfect. So brush is nice. Um, a lot of people use brush. I, I do sometimes. Depends what you're trying to do. Do you use... Um... Do you use like a Wacom or a drawing tablet? Yeah, I have a, uh, I have an Intuos um, Cintiq. Uh, um, I have the, uh, I have an older one. So the 22 UX, I'm going to be getting a newer one hopefully soon. Um, but it, ultimately they all work kind of the same. Is that with the screen display? The, the, I have, I have, what I have is I have the, uh, the, Cintiq, the Cintiq hooked up and it's, it's you draw right on the screen, um, which is right here. Here's my pen drawing right on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then I have another monitor set up right over there, and that lets me see any reference. If I want to put reference up on my other monitor, it's directly behind it. So I can look over there for my reference and then draw right on, on the Cintiq. So. so for somebody like me who, um, you know, feels pretty confident about drawing by hand, would you recommend something like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. First of all, I, I noticed that when... Um, when I started using the Cintiq, I ended up with a lot less pain in my hand from like clenching and drawing. I don't end up with carpal tunnel pain anymore. Every once in a while, after about 14 hours, I'll end up with a little crick right back here. But it's nothing a little wine won't fix. So, <laughs> but um, uh, really, I don't get as much pain and it's much more ergonomic and easier to work in. So if you, if you can get a uh, Cintiq, that's awesome. If you get a little Cintiq, that's fine too. If you, you know, depending on, you know, the size doesn't seem to matter as much. It depends on how you like to work. I like my 20, I think it's a 24 inch or 22 inch. It's just, this thing is ancient. I got to get a new one. Um, but it's good because it's a good size for you to move your whole hand. Um, you can well, use I, your mouse too. If you're, you, what are you using? You're using mouse? Yeah, I'm using a mouse. So okay. I am, um, so my, you know, my, I feel like my strokes aren't as smooth or clean as they would be if I were holding, um, holding a pen or stylus, but, or an actual brush. But um, the, so I'm a single mom. And uh, my, you know, I feel like one with a screen display, what I've seen is they're more expensive. Mm -hmm. The ones without a screen display, I feel like it would be just disorienting. It would take a lot of time to get used to, and I don't know if it's really worth. Oh, you mean like, yeah, just the tablets? Uh, they're, the, I use, all right, so I've used all of them. I used the mouse at the very beginning. And then I got the, uh, the, the Cintiq tablets that are on the side, and I got a four by five inch one, and then a six by nine inch one, and then a really big one. Um, I like the six by nine. That's actually not an unbearable size. It's a good size for the wrist movements. And you get used to moving your hand over here like you do a mouse and looking at the screen. It's not as disorientating as you think it would be. Um, and they're not too expensive. Uh, but it does give you a little bit of more freedom for the hand movement. Um, another thing that I, I see that is good is that you don't need necessarily need to get the really expensive big Wacom tablet. Wacom makes great products, and they've been making them or Wacom or Wacom. They've been making them for a long time. Um, and this model that I have is actually like 12, 14 years old, something like that. It's pretty old, um, but it works about the same as the new ones. The new ones have some fancier buttons and, and stuff, but I haven't noticed a huge amount of difference. Um, what I got my girls, my daughters, when I got them some, because um, I wanted them to be able to have a Wacom, but I don't, I didn't want to spend too much money, is I actually got them the uh, the 12 UX, which is a 12 inch screen. Um, and it hook, it plugs into your computer and it's a, you work right on it. Um, and it's 12 inches. They also have a 13 inch version, but I got the 12 because the 12 is discontinued. So on eBay, it was like 450 bucks to get one. So it wasn't too bad. So you have the whole, you know, you, you just, you can just put it right in front of you and you can draw the same. It's not as big as this one, but it works just fine. Um, and then you have your sec secondary monitor as well, um, that you can use if you need to. And I, I found that to be a good affordable option. So okay. it's, it's affordable. It's not so expensive. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, so, but it worked, it worked really well. So, yeah. So.
anyway, okay, so where were we? Back. Okay, so I'm gonna leave these guys, uh, the, the cross hatches, I'm gonna leave these guys as a stroke for now because I might wanna change the size of them later. So I'm gonna leave those as, a, as, as just a stroke, okay? I'll leave okay. them alone for now. Okay, so back to our shape here. I'm gonna show you now, I'm gonna show you two ways to finish this shape so that you can choose which way you wanna do it. And for your homework, you can go ahead and, uh, and um, finish playing with it. I should show this later off for now. So, okay. So um, first way to do it is to make it completely symmetrical. And that would be to create this shape. Now I'm gonna do a, uh, a square. And then I'm gonna do a circle up here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just freeform draw the rest of this like this. Add those three together. And I end up with about the half the shape here. And if I go to object, transform, reflect, copy, move it over here. And then go ahead and start to modify these points to get them to be where I want them to be, to look like my proper shape. So you can see I'm, I'm lining these up. Now it's not perfect because it's a drawing, so that's okay though. So that's one way that you can go ahead and you can make basically the shape and start working from it. See that? Mm -hmm. Or. Oh, so that's one way to do it. And that's uh, that's the, the shape way. The other way is for you to basically just do it by hand, either with the brush tool, if you were more comfortable working the brush tool, or you can go ahead and you could outline this kind of reform the way you want to. Now you see, I'm just ignoring the key right now. Just ignore the key. Any shapes that go over it, we're going to put on top of it. So um, I'm not gonna try to trace around the key because I might wanna move the key later. So I think it's easier just to have it in layers, to have the key as an object over it. Yeah. So here I just traced around it this way. Um, one way I can do this inner one if I wanted to uh, is that I can, I can either just trace on the inside of it. I can copy. Obviously, if I paste in front and I shrink it down, it's not going to shrink down properly because it's going to shrink down to the outside. But you notice this is going to be weird. So one way that I found to do uh, to do that is to put a stroke around it, do the inside, not the outside, the inside, inside. See, I'm going for where that inside stroke is about mm -hmm. at the right. I'm gonna do it at five. I'm gonna expand it. And then I'm gonna go ahead, see that, that shape? And I'm gonna delete just the outside. So now I end up with just the inside shape. Ah. So I've taught you pretty much everything you need to do to go ahead and figure out how you want to go ahead and, uh, and, and, and complete this lock. Let's go back and put this guy back here. You can move this guy in here. Object unlock. Give me that back. There we go. We can move him in there. Um, and now you can, we can get rid of the outer stroke. You can use the brush tool if you want, and you can go ahead and start making these shapes, these curly cues, like this, or you can do them with the with the uh, with different shapes, or you can do them with your um, your pen tool. It, it's, it, from now on, it becomes it really comes down to preference. Okay. See. And just don't forget that you know you can take these lines that I just made and you turn them into shapes, and then you can modify them later. All right. Okay. Cool. So and I'll teach you more homework? about that's your homework. Go ahead and finish this with some of the techniques that I taught you as realistic or as stylized as you would like. Um, we're going to do, we're going to treat the, uh, the key. You can do the key too, if you want, but treat it as a separate, separate object. Don't, okay. don't do the, don't combine it in with the lock because we're going to want to put it on top of the lock. That way, if you want to move it or something later, you can. So, okay. Okay. We'll get into shading and colors and stuff later. So cool. And we'll do text later too. So, okay. All right. Any other, um, feel free to, to just hit me up if you have any other questions. Okay. Yeah. Oh, one more question. Is it okay if the people that are um, watching this uh, download your lock to use it just for 
just for practice for this tutorial. Yeah, it's fine. Can we, um, can we put like a watermark or something on there? Absolutely. Okay. Let's put, don't copy it yet, don't copy it yet. Mm -hmm. Put a watermark on there. Come on. Get out of the, ah. I mean, they're going to be copying it anyway, but. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know, just for practice. Um, let me get that on there. I will, I will put a file up that they can use that has your watermark. What information do you want it to say? Just copyright you? Sure. Yeah, I'll put that up. Yeah. So. This is, um, this is actually, so this is actually a private art journal entry, but I liked it so much um, that I got to share, I decided to share it. That was fun. Thanks for watching. And be sure to hit subscribe and visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash the Excalibur Project. My website at echoteric.com. Thank you for, for tuning in.